Welcome to another episode of Alternative Dog Moms. We're taking the week off, but we will be back next week. For now, we're going to replay an episode that we recorded in 2022, which features Erin discussing her trip to the Healthy Dog Expo. And with the event coming back again in a couple of weeks, we thought you guys would enjoy this one. See you next week. Welcome to Alternative Dog Moms Podcast. I'm Kimberly Gautier, the creator of Keep the Tail Wagging. For the past nine years, I've been blogging about raw feeding, pet wellness, and life as a crazy dog mom. I've seen massive improvements in my dog's health since I started raising my dogs naturally, and I'm passionate about sharing my experience to help other pet parents. I'm Erin Scott. For the past nine years, I've been researching and learning everything I can about healing cancer, allergies, autoimmune, and mystery illnesses in both my dogs and myself, and I can't wait to share with you everything I've learned on this journey. As the Alternative Dog Moms, we're bringing you all the latest dog health news that we're following and sharing the tips, tricks, and resources we learn along the way. Now, let's get started. I'm excited. Hello, Kimberly. Hi, Erin. Okay, I'm, I, I just can't. I can't even do anything else. I need to know, how was the Healthy Dog Expo? It was amazing. <laughs> I saw some of the pictures here and there on social media, um, and mostly everyone's hugging up and smiling at a camera. Um, I saw a few pictures of speakers, but um, uh, so I guess, you know, so yes, it was amazing. I want to know, what was your, like... Did you have a favorite speaker? Did something someone said just really resonate with you? So I don't know that I had a favorite speaker. It's like trying to pick your favorite child or something. (laughs) But uh, I think like my overarching takeaway that I hope like everybody took away was actually something that Rodney said. And it's a quote uh, from somebody else, but I feel like everybody there is probably going to think it's Rodney's quote and, you know, that he's like so brilliant, (laughs) which he is, but you know. Um, So it was... Um, that we need to be able to learn, unlearn, and relearn. Oh, that's br- brilliant. The the concept of like not getting like so uh, personally attached to our beliefs and our information and, and be willing to take in new information and change our minds. And, and that's something my husband and I talk about a lot, especially with the news and things like that. And, uh, and I was just like, man, if I hope like if, if nobody, you know, if you don't get anything else out of this weekend, like I hope people take that with them. Yeah. And, and he really, you know, did these amazing, you know, metaphors and slides and videos and everything to like really illustrate that concept. And, mm-hmm. and so I was like, Oh, that, 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 that is so is smart. I'm going to, I'm going to harass him about it, <laughs> but I, that is so brilliant <laughs> because it it is so true. I mean, when I think about my raw feeding journey, like from where I started to where I am today, I have tried so many things and believed so many things. And it took a long time for me to just let it go and to go with the flow. And now when I see people struggling, you know, I feel kind of sad for them. And I'm trying to just say, we don't know, you know, because I get that where people, someone just asked me a question about organs and, you know, what organs should they add and what it, I, I thought pork organs were had more bacteria and da, 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 da. And I was just sort of like, I don't know. I was like, I, you know, just, you know, ask around like you're doing, you're doing it. And it's funny because, you know, this person was like, you know, and I've heard this from other people too, where they are so afraid of not knowing that um, they feel embarrassed. And I get the, right. I'm sorry, I have another question where it's just like, yeah, guess what? I have a million. <laughs> it's, it's just the yes. way it is. And oh, I love that message though. Like my husband always says, the smartest thing that you can say is I don't know, mm-hmm. but I'm going to go find out. Yeah, exactly. And for anyone who is listening, I did call my girlfriend who owns a raw food company and I learned that she actually doesn't have pork kidneys added to her blends because of the high bacteria level in pork kidneys. Oh, I, I did not know this. It was the first time I've heard of it. So it's like, okay, learn something new every day. That's what my grandma always used to say. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I know this has nothing to do with dogs, but how was the meal situation? <laughs> <laughs> um, it was pretty uh, DIY uh, for for the most part. They did have a lunch and it was very crowded. <laughs> 
<laughs> and there's like a really long line. And since I drove myself, I just went to Panera Bread around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> nice. See, if I would have gone, I would have just hung around with you. <laughs> <laughs> but there was um, an awesome dinner on Friday night that I was invited to uh, that Michelle Allen and Julie Jacobs had, had gotten together. So, yeah. so that was a lot of fun uh, in the hotel restaurant there. And the hotel has an awesome restaurant. And uh, and then Saturday night, some of my one of my friends from Baltimore who was up and some of her, she's a dog trainer and some of her dog training friends, we went to this like Japanese steakhouse place <gasps> that was like right across the street. Nice. And, uh, so there's a lot of, and you know, I'm a big Starbucks person. And so there was like a Starbucks, you could walk there, but I didn't because it was raining. And, uh, you know, so there was like a Starbucks right around the corner too. So it was like, I was like, this is an amazing location. <laughs> I know the last when I went and I guess, I don't know if, I guess it was either 2019, 2018. I honestly don't remember when I, I it would, had to be, it doesn't matter. <laughs> We're not going to waste minutes while I figure out the, <laughs> <laughs> but um, it was snowing when I went. So oh, what was geez. the weather like? It was really, really nice on Friday. It was gorgeous, probably like sunny 65. Uh, mm -hmm. That was the day I drove up. And then it did kind of rain a little bit off and on um, Saturday, but it wasn't terrible. Mm -hmm. And then Sunday, it was like a little cloudy. And as I was driving home, it was getting sunnier and sunnier. Well, how was it? Was it Friday night, Saturday and Sunday, or was it Saturday and Sunday? So it was like all day Saturday and then Sunday morning. And okay. we were pretty much done like around noon on, on Sunday. Okay. Okay. Then that makes sense. Because I saw a lot of people still posting on Sunday. And I was like, I thought it was Friday and Saturday. But okay, that makes sense. And when it comes to, I know that there were a lot of speakers. So there is, you know, Susan Thixton. Um, did Rodney and Karen speak together or apart? Apart. Okay. And then um, Billy, what did Billy, Billy did not talk about the dangers of feeding bread to dogs, did he? <laughs> <laughs> No, but he told me that story at dinner on Friday night. <laughs> and I do want to say in your defense, by the way, that it was sourdough bread, which is better than like Wonder Bread. Exactly. And it was homemade by Billy Hookman. I mean, Billy Hookman, when Billy Hookman makes something, everyone can eat it. It's the healthiest thing around. You know, it has all organic, locally Fermented, sourced I mean, ingredients. When it's sourdough, I mean, sometimes they're even doing it off a of scoby, like fermentation, <laughs> you know, I mean. Exactly. You know, Lua was like, she crawled into my lap and gave me those Lua eyes. And I was just like, of course you can share my bread. Here you go. And then I just heard, you did not just give my dog bread. <laughs> and I was like, oh, cool. <laughs> so I will say that, you know, one of the takeaways I had from Billy's speech, which I had to laugh because he was like, I'm apologizing to all the dog trainers in the crowd before I say this, but he was talking about dogs and begging for food and, you know, at the table and how that's sort of how they evolutionarily became dogs is, mm -hmm. you know, bonding with people over scraps of food and, and things. And so, you know, I had um, dogs begging I mean, you know, it's we've been sharing food with our dogs for 200,000 years. It's part of evolution. So, <laughs> you know, I, I thought that was like a cute. Um, I mean, I don't know, cute, but it was just a, an interesting takeaway that it's yeah. like, oh, we're not necessarily doing a bad thing. I'll have to share that with Johan because he's constantly um, sharing his food with the dogs. <laughs> he doesn't understand. The dogs don't beg from me. I can eat an entire meal and they're just laying around. They'll look over at me to see, is she sharing? Nope. Okay. I'm going to lay down again. And he's just engaging in an evolutionary behavior that exactly. has been evolving for 200,000 years. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> that is hilarious. So what was his topic since he wouldn't share it with me? So it was it was really interesting. It was a, it was kind of about what he feeds his dog mm -hmm. and why. And you know, one of his main takeaways was just about doing what works for your dog. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, not the same thing doesn't work for every dog. Feed the dog in front of you. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and uh, you know, building variety in the diet. And he talked about like things that he gives, you know, Huckleberry every day versus things he gives in kind of once in a while. And and then he talked about like building a healthy fatty acid profile, building a better microbiome. 
And, you know, that was one of my my big takeaways that I, I think almost every speaker touched on was microbiome. Mm-hmm. And that's something I've been kind of nerding out on for the last couple years, especially with my dog Penny and her like weird health issues and stuff. So uh, I was like, oh, that's like one of my top takeaways that I hope everybody got was like microbiome, microbiome, microbiome. And- I love that. It, it just goes to show that, you know, because I know that when animal biome came to the market, the talk about microbiome was huge. And so it kind of sounded, it came across at some times as kind of a commercial catchy thing. Mm -hmm. Like this is, this is what we're into now. Um, But it kind of calmed down and people started having serious discussions about it. And I think it's because people, you know, a lot of people who were taking that test and then following up with the consultation, maybe getting supplements or making adjusting their dog's diet and seeing a difference in their dog. Um, I, th- I think that that's amazing. I would actually love to um, do a test on my dogs after like another, a few more months doing the rotational mono feeding. I mean, mm. technically I should do the test now and then wait six months and do it then. Compare it. Right? Yeah, to have a comparison. But it would be really interesting because um, – I'm curious to know what the changes I'm making, how they're going to impact their microbiome only because it's been a few weeks and I'm already seeing um, significant changes in Hmm. um, two of my dogs. And so, yeah. Do you want me to tell you what they are? I do. (laughs) (laughs) Well, Zoe needs to lose weight. So she's losing weight, which is nice. But also I had noticed that her coat had gotten really dull and kind of flaky and this is something that happened with Sydney. And I I don't know what to attribute it to. I never really figured it out. But one thing I found is that when she lost all the weight um, and was more healthy, her coat looked a lot healthier. And so getting the weight off of her, I think she just started losing the weight. I can feel her ribs again. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's really nice to see. And then with Rodrigo, he has arthritis. And so his arthritis seems to be not um, bothering him as much. And then, you know, with Apollo, I don't know, he's, he's a puppy still. I mean, he's three years old, but he's still a puppy. He's a nice little (laughs) healthy dog. And, but Scout, I mean, he's, Scout's doing really well with the diet. Um, One thing that I found is that there's certain medications that I have to give him. I never know what to call them because they're not tranquilizers, but they're just those medications to calm him down when we go to the vet. Mm Mm-hmm. This one of the side effects for Scout is oh, diarrhea. Sedative. Yes, that, thank you. Sed, I could. I have been trying to think of this word for weeks. Um, sedative. Um, it gives them diarrhea, mm-hmm. and this diet kind of stops that or slows that down oh, by yeah. switching him, like giving him a plant day where his gut is just processing plants. And I actually changed it for him, where um, he and all my dogs they get either bone broth or goat's milk. So tomorrow is going to be the plant day and they'll get bone broth and goat's milk for lunch or for breakfast and for lunch. And then for dinner, they'll get a huge vegetable meal. And that's that, that's their plant day. And it's, it's really working out for them. So, but anyway, back to the expo. So I know that there were 400 million people at this event. (laughs) How is that? Hey, quick question for you. Are you someone who wants to be fit, healthy, and happy? And what if I told you you could get your dream body by simply just listening to a podcast? I'm Josh. And I'm KG, and we're the hosts of the Fit, Healthy, and Happy podcast. Listen, we get it. Fitness isn't easy. Carbs, no carbs. Just stop, okay? It doesn't have to be that complicated. And that's why we made this podcast. We get straight to the facts so you can become your best you. So the way to check us out is click the link in the show notes or search Fit, Healthy, and Happy podcast on any of the major podcast platforms. We'll see you soon. Well, I always get a little weird in a crowd. So I'm always like in the back on the aisle so I can like duck out if I need to. <laughs> I do the same. But it was honestly like really awesome. Like that was really, you know, I've done some of these like online summits and, and things like that. And these have been amazing uh, information to learn. But it really, there really is something special, right, to, to being mm-hmm. in a room with people who are all on like the same wa- the same wavelength as yeah. you, and you know, I was just thinking, uh, I was I was talking to one of my friends today, and she owns the retail store where I like the independent pet food store that I go to, and 
she was kind of, I was telling her, you know, about the expo and everything. And she was like, Oh my gosh, like she, she has a, a horse that's very sick. So she didn't want to leave her, her horse. And, but I really wish she had gone. Cause I feel like it would have been good for her. And, and I always assume that everybody who shops there is like me. And yeah. she was kind of like, no, <laughs> <laughs> like, no, like most of them just want like, you know, some kind of kibble, you know? And I was like, Oh, and, and, and we were just really kind of nerding out on, on some of the stuff. And, and, uh, you know, and I was just thinking like how alone we can feel sometimes in, mm-hmm. in this journey with our pets. And especially if we're, doing things that like not everybody else around us is doing or yeah. that our even our vet doesn't agree with. And so to be in like this room of people where you can just strike up a conversation with whoever's sitting next to you and, and talk about things like it's just, I'm not alone. I'm not the yes. only one. Like I'm not crazy. Like everybody here is on the same wavelength. And, and I think that was so important. And, you know, there's a few times like we'd be standing in a line or, or just sitting there and, you know, everybody's super friendly and you just start talking to the person next to you, like, who are your dogs and, and stuff. And, and so it was really just uh, exciting from, from that perspective. Yeah. That sounds amazing. And I, I mean, that's what the thing about it is that I love being with other people uh, who f- feed raw, whether it be raw, home cooked, whatever the case may be, but the people who we're putting all this time and energy and focus into what we're doing with our dogs because I mean, I'm actually pretty darn lucky because almost my entire friendship base here locally is dog people. And Mine my, too. <laughs> my social world is dog stuff. It's like we have rescue events to go to. Yes. We, you know, my friends stopped by on Monday and brought me a huge bag of frozen bones. And so I made bone broth all that day. And um, so we, we we're, it's like totally normal. And so when I'm outside of my bubble here and like, if I'm at my day job, um, it's weird to me when I meet a new person, because I've worked at my day job for almost 18 years. And so they all know who I am. They know what I'm about. (laughs) And and, uh, when one of my dogs um, died eight years ago, almost nine years ago, uh, I got bereavement. Uh, they weren't supposed to, my boss wasn't supposed to give me bereavement, but he gave me bereavement Aww. for a few days because, um, and yeah, they're, they're just, they're accepting and they understand. And they'll say that, well, to Kimberly, her dogs are her kids. And then right. like, oh, and, but it's like, it's so much fun to go to these events where you're talking to people who are so, I mean, the pet industry, you know, love it or hate it, whether, you know, the kibble, um, veterinarians who don't support raw, of uh, all the downsides that we see when we're at an event, even as an event as big as like super zoo. So you're seeing, you know, the Purinas all the <laughs> way up to the um, raw food brands. Um, you see in everything there. The cool thing is that we're all so crazy about our animals. Right. So it's like, even if we don't agree on how to feed them on and whatever else is out there, we're all crazy about our animals. And there is this type of a feeling where if your family doesn't quite understand why you're so crazy. And, <laughs> these um, are your people. Yeah, these are your people. And it, it kind of reinvigorates you because yeah. I know that I found that when I come home from Super Zoo, I'm like at the airport writing because mm-hmm. I'm so I'm because I'm up late at night writing because I just feel so um, inspired being around people. So I was wondering, did you have that? Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's amazing. And I have all these things I want to try and all these things I want to buy. And <laughs> that's it. And did um, did Rodney explain the blueberries? Did anyone ask him about the blueberries <laughs> and the light bulbs? Because <laughs> I did. No, not specifically. That's very funny. But there was a lot of talk about like diversity and Billy touched on it, like diversity and feeding plants builds their microbiome. Uh, but nobody specifically talked about the blueberry. <laughs> I gave him a really hard time because I love the graphic about the blueberries. And I basically, I think the graphic was you fed two blueberries to every pound that your dog weighs. Was it? It feels like that's wrong. No, for every two pounds? No, that's not right either. But basically it came to, um, a lot of blueberries. It was a lot of, it was like 35 blueberries a day. So obviously my math is off. Yes. I'm an accountant by day. Um, (laughs) so obviously my math is off. I can't remember what it said, but, um, it was, I figured it out. It's like 35 blueberries and the blueberries that I buy here are very big. 
And I was just like, do you know how many blueberries that is? And, and he was just like, the blueberries here are really small. And so it's really not that big of a deal. I didn't think about the fact that American blueberries are so much bigger than Canadian blueberries and UK mm. blueberries. And yeah, some of them he, are like wild blueberries and they're very small. Yeah, exactly. And then, you know, when he said that, I was like, oh my gosh, I am, I am the ugly American who <laughs> did not think about the fact that there are blueberries all around the world. Um, and some places don't even have access to blueberries, so they have to be shipped in and they may look different. And all I could think about was, look, dude, these blueberries are huge and I'm not giving my dogs 35 blueberries a day. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I just love this. And I'm, I'm like so excited for you. I'm so proud of you for going <laughs> and staying and getting, getting some learning in. Um, what about Susan Thixton? What was she talking about? Oh my gosh, all the things. So in my mind, by the way, Susan Thixton is like the Aaron Brockovich of the pet food right? industry. Yes. And isn't it crazy that she spoke to Aaron Brockovich? Yes. <laughs> I, that's just like full circle moment right there. I, I thought that too. So, you know, a lot of it was like stuff that I was like somewhat familiar with, but I really loved hearing her just like lay it out the way that she did. And I, I think her first slide said, how bad is it? <laughs> and then like the next thing comes up and it's like, well, there's bad regulations, bad regulators, bad ingredients, bad manufacturing, bad labeling and bad consequences. <laughs> so it's bad. <laughs> I know. It's like bad. And uh, and then just this whole idea about like feed versus food and how things aren't properly labeled and mm -hmm. uh, and you know that kibble is responsible for ninety eight percent of the you know recalls and and things for salmonella and all these things whereas raw is only responsible for one point two percent wow um, of pathogenic bacteria recalls uh, over the years there's only been two human illnesses related to wow. raw, whereas kibble, there has been at least 49. And uh, and yet, if you go on the FDA's website, there actually is a, a warning about like how feeding raw is so dangerous, mm -hmm. even though 98% of the problems are with the kibble. Oh, that's crazy. And it's and funny because I, I shouldn't be surprised, but I'm so shocked by those figures. Statistics, I know. Because we're we're constantly being fed how dangerous raw feeding is. And whenever there is a raw food brand that has a recall, man, it gets so much press. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, and there's a couple of websites that have for a, a while, I don't know about now, but for a while were just so um, anti-raw. It was insane. And um, one was Poison Pets. And I remember she did not like Darwin's. And it was just like, it, I mean, the articles that she wrote about Darwin's were like, this isn't right. I mean, it was just like, what's going on? Why don't you like raw food? So one of my favorite moments from the conference happened while Susan Thixton was talking. Um, I mean, it was sort of a sad story, but she's talking, telling a story about a man who was a food scientist and his dog actually died from endotoxins in the pet's food. Mm -hmm. And all he knew was his dog died and he did all this research in, into what could have caused it. And he um, was feeding his dog Beneful. And mm -hmm. there was like a collective crowd like, ugh. <laughs> And that's, that was like one of those moments, like, my people. You know? <laughs> it's like, how do you really feel? <laughs> right. so it, just, uh, it was just one of those things where it just made you feel like you're in the right room. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, I remember when I was new to pet blogging, I was feeding, and we were so proud of ourselves. We were feeding blue buffalo. You know, be, oh, we used to feed that too yeah. and think we were doing good. Yes. Being the responsible pet parents yes. we were, we saw a commercial. We were like, that's that looks like a good food. And I like what that commercial it has is saying meat to me. as the first ingredient. Exactly. This is a good thing. <laughs> this yes. is a good thing. We went to the pet store. They were telling us all the great things about how great. And so we started feeding blue buffalo. And then I got a comment from someone that said that told me about, you know, the ingredients and explained sent some articles to me. And it was so interesting because it was just sort of like, well, damn, <laughs> what do what I am do? I supposed to feed? Right? You know, but I it did. It still never occurred to me to not feed kibble. That 
came a long while later. But um, but it's just like, I think it's funny today that, uh, yeah, when you're in a room full of, uh, of raw feeders, man, we have an opinion. And, it's, <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and we can share it without feeling like we're going to hurt someone's feelings. Right. <laughs> And then uh, somebody, you know, at the end, she took a few questions and somebody was kind of like, well, what do we do? What can we do? Like, do we need to, you know, petition? Do we need to, you know, stand out with protests, you know? And, and she was like, we just need the current laws to be enforced. And, you know, it's like, write your legislator. She's got form letters. It's like, we're not asking for anything crazy nobody we just want the oh, laws wow. that are currently on the book about feed versus food to be enforced because it shouldn't be called pet food it should be called pet feed nice gosh it's so simple too yeah because i do i have always felt like she was climbing a steep mountain over there and breaking it down like that makes it so simple and it makes it more tragic yeah. Because it's like, it's all, everything's all there. You guys just need to do your job. Right. I mean, and it's just, and what's, I think the thing that sucks so much about, you know, like with AFCO and these pet food companies is I know that these people love animals. These people aren't walking around going, right. we're, we're going to, how many dogs did we kill today? Right. You know, they, you know, these people, I mean, I, my brother works for PetSmart and, he, he, he's actually one of the few people that doesn't have a dog and people bring their dogs to work. They're crazy about dogs. They're, you know, they're, this is what their world is. And, you know, and I know that that's the same. I remember years and years ago when Rodney and I were new friends, he once asked me, he was like, do you think that people at Purina love their dogs any less than we do? And I was just like, sometimes it feels that way, but I know it's not the truth. And he's like, yeah, he's like, they love, they think they're doing the right thing. Right. And, you know, yeah, there may be some people out there that understand, you know, that, you know, that's not the greatest ingredient, but they really think that they're doing the right thing. And um, that's what got me to stop kibble bashing, just that conversation and realizing that, you know, people are trying their hardest, both you know, professionally and, you know, pet parents at home, everyone's doing the best that they can. Yeah. It's just, you know, it's so sad because it's like, I know you guys love dogs too. So why aren't you following the law? Right. Why? Oh, what about Kendra Pope? Were you able to ask her my question? I was not because after she spoke, I like never really saw her again. <laughs> well, with 400 people, I don't understand how you would. <laughs> But uh, so she was the first speaker of the morning and uh, I had been standing out in the vendor area talking to people and then it's like, oh, I have to go in. So I was like, it was like standing room only. Like I was just like standing in the back of the room for, for her. And um, I just, I just admire that woman. Like, oh my gosh, like so much. And, uh, you know, so she had this whole thing about that was like a pyramid and like the bottom of the pyramid is nutrition. And then you like kind of work your way up to different things that you can do to help your dog that has cancer. And, you know, the top one is being more like the targeted uh, things like you, we were talking about mistletoe and uh, things like high dose vitamin C infusions and, and all that. But there's all these other things that you can do, like, you know, the mushrooms and, the you know, the, but like the her whole point is like that it's about creating an environment that's like conducive, like anti-conducive to the cancer, you know, yeah. and it's like, it's about doing everything in the pyramid to uh, create an environment in the, your dog's body that, you know, to fight cancer mm -hmm. and, you know, and it starts with nutrition and it, then adding in like nutraceuticals and things like that. And then, you know, we, we can go and that there's just so many tools in the toolbox um, that like, you know, not every vet knows about, but she wants you to know about it. And, you know, and she can help guide your vet. She can help guide you. Mm -hmm. You can, you know, work with your holistic and integrative practitioners and, and, you know, get them turned on to these things. And, um, and of course we had been talking about mistletoe mm -hmm. and I had actually used mistletoe in my own breast cancer treatment. And so I'm like super always nerdy about, <laughs> about knowing everything about that and, and hoping that that's used more in our dogs because mm -hmm. there's really great research about it, at yeah. least in people. They've been using it in Europe for like 35 years. Yeah, you said that. I started looking it up and I was like astounded and I actually bought, no, that's not it. I bought some. Oh, mm -hmm. mistletoe. Oh, but it, it's a tincture. 
Oh, interesting. Yeah, because it's like it has health. It has a health benefits other than um, cancer. cancer. And what I found really interesting is that you know mistletoe is a poisonous plant. So I think and there's many different strains. Well, that's good to know. But I I just really think it's interesting how poison cures poison. So right. like you know like with a um if you, an anti venom is made with snake venom. Right. And so it's just like, I just think nature is fascinating. It's just so fascinating, but I love it. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I do have one question. Did she mention anything about, because there is a belief that if your dog is going through chemotherapy, you shouldn't be giving your dog antioxidants because the antioxidants will protect the cancer cells and make it hard for chemo to kill the cancer cells. And I've always- she did- Oh, touch yeah, yeah. on that. Yeah. Um, and just kind of that, uh, again, that, that's why it's important to work with, you know, a practitioner who, who knows about these things because mm-hmm. you don't want to, you know, put yourself in that kind of position. Yeah. yeah. The hardest thing is, um, you know, of course, when we get a cancer diagnosis, our first thing is we race to Google and start trying to read up as much as possible. I get emails from people every week, either whether it be hermangiosarcoma or canine lymphoma, um, who want to know, it's like, well, what did you do? How is your dog doing? I can tell you it was a kick in the gut for six months after Sydney passed away when people would be like, I'm so sorry about your dog. How's she doing now? And I have to be able to like, find a way to say, well, she's dead, but I would say, <laughs> oh, well, she passed on and, you know, and stuff like that with, and Aww. say that without giving them, without, I guess, taking away their hope right. because there's so many dogs out there that have survived Hermangio sarcoma and have lived, you know, years longer in the group on Facebook. I know that there were dogs that were four years post diagnosis and oh, doing wow. great. So it's just like, it is, a, it is a possibility. But that's, so that's I, at the end of her presentation, this was one of the cool things was she did, went through some like case studies of mm-hmm. different dogs that she's worked with. Oh, good. And I don't think any of them had Hermangio, but one of the owners was there and her dog like had lived for, um, I think it was 5.3 years past oh, wow. diagnosis date and had like literally very recently passed. And the woman I was, I was actually standing like almost like right next to her and she's like in tears and there's like all these pictures of her dog. And, you know, he had been diagnosed when he was like nine years old and he lived to like 14 and there was like pictures of his like 14th birthday. And he had been given a prognosis of, you know, like six to nine months. Oh wow! And, you know, they had these really amazing, you know, results and, and she said that when he passed that their like traditional regular veterinarian um, okay, kind of contacted her like, okay, what are you doing? Because there's something to this. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, and it is like optimistic that, you know, you're, you're changing people's minds. And there were other dogs that she's worked with where when they had lived so long past their initial prognosis, you know, that when they did pass, like... Uh, a veterinary school wanted to do like a necropsy to see like, mm-hmm. cause he ended up passing from something totally different than, yeah. you know, the, the cancer. And they wanted to see like, what, what did, what happened here? What, mm-hmm. you know, what exactly is the effect? And, and so it's just so validating to, to hear those kind of stories too. Oh, and then absolutely. on just like a very like sweet note, um, she ended her, um, the last slide was this like painting of like, kind of like a, you're watching a woman walk her dog kind of down a hill. And she said this was a painting that her mom had done for her. And her mom was actually there in the audience. And she said, this is the first time that my mom's ever got a chance to like, see me speak. And like, she's crying. Like her mom's crying. (laughs) Everybody's giving like a standing ovation. It was just like, Oh, that's (laughs) nice. That's so sweet. (laughs) I, 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 I love that. I love <laughs> case studies. And, you know, because there is a Hermangio group on Facebook and they have a file that has everyone like what they're doing mm-hmm. for their dog diet wise, other things that they're doing with their dog, the date that their dog was diagnosed, like what type of, you know, like, was it spleen or, you know, was it or where, wherever it was. And, you know, basically how far out their dog had survived or, or was still alive. And it was, one of those things where it was so helpful because I think that, you know, every person who reaches out to me is understandably very upset, very afraid, very scared, thinking that they're going to lose their dog. And, and it's just sort of like one thing that I learned 
with Scout is that cancer is not a death sentence or, you know, or it doesn't have to be with every situation. And my vet, you know, back with Sydney, one thing that she told me in the beginning is um, she was like, Kimberly, you know, you, you feed raw, you know, your dogs are healthy. She's like, I have all their records here. This, this is a healthy dog, you know, so there is a chance that we can somehow get her over. I mean, it's not good, but we can still get some time with her. And we did. I got five weeks with her. And with Scout, I got over a year with him. I mean, and he's still going. And and it's one of those where I think that in our community, the people who are feeding fresh food, we need to you know, give ourselves a pat on the back. Because, and I think that we get so focused on, I know I do at least, I get so focused on learning and learning something new that I sometimes forget to stop and appreciate what I've accomplished with my dogs. Right. You know, because, and, you know, because we're always looking towards like the Dr. Beckers and the Dr. Koziers and Rodney Habibs and the Billy Hookmans of the world. And we're like, oh, wow, look at what they're doing. But it's like, man, we get up every day and we mix up these meals and we're doing meal prep and we're shopping for foods and we're still researching even after years we're still researching and learning new things that's you know on top of having a job and you know and all the other things i mean this that's pretty impressive that we are so devoted to our animals and i think that sometimes we forget to just acknowledge that in ourselves Absolutely. And that's always one of the things I always credit my dogs with, like helping me stay present, helping me stay in the moment, you know, and not like getting too ahead of myself, you know, and yeah. I always think that's one of the greatest lessons I've I've learned from them. <laughs> so very true. So very true. Wow. So I'm so glad you went to that. That sounds <laughs> like too. so much fun. So one of the other speakers that I was excited about was Suzanne Clothier, who oh, yeah. is a dog trainer. Mm-hmm. And so she actually is the author of like my favorite dog book ever called Bones Would Rain from the Sky. And uh, it's been around for a long time. I probably read it 12 or more years ago for the first time. And it just really transformed how I think about having a relationship with my dog. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we have pit bulls and especially, you know, 15 or more years ago, I don't know, there was a different sort of conversation around pit bulls and Mm -hmm. people get very weird about training pit bulls and some trainers won't train them. And, you know, it's, there's sort of that like alpha type of thing that goes along with it. And and that just never resonated with me. And that was never how I wanted to have a relationship with, with my dogs. And so her book was very like validating to me in, in that regard of like having this relationship based, you know, uh, training. And then with, we have our, our dog Nino now, who was like the most like fearful, freaked out dog, you know, that, that we've ever had. And so I actually have my husband read the book and he is not like, I mean, he, he likes to, um, he likes audio books, yeah. but he's not like a reader reader, but he has read that book two different times <laughs> just over the years, because it's just such a good reminder of like taking things at Nino's pace and, you know, and what, what we want our relationship with him to look like. So I was very excited to, to be and able to hear her. Add speak. it to my shopping cart. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and so she was actually talking about something. I think this would be really cool for people who are, maybe like uh, veterinarians or trainers or dog mm-hmm. sitters. So she's been working on this app that's called like the functional assessment tool. And it's kind of about, and, and like her first slide was kind of like, how is your dog today? And then she kind of breaks down like how she looks at that, about like how they're eating or drinking mm-hmm. or urinating or pooping, or how do they get along with other dogs? And, mm-hmm. you know, like if they're like, if they're having a good day, are they one way versus, you know, not and, and it was just like a great way to like think about your dog in sort of that holistic manner of like how is your dog today and and she's also just like an amazing like storyteller <laughs> and and you know like you, she could be like a comedian or something you know she's just like you get I really hooked it. in so I was very uh, I was very excited to get to, to see her too <laughs> I added it to my audible <laughs> well it's oh gosh it's so cool was um, Susan Garrett there. No, uh, I think she had canceled or, or something. Okay. Yeah. I, she, I love her. Like if I were to go, I mean, gosh, if I were to go, I would have wanted to corner her and talk to her about <laughs> um, puppy culture because I, I'm fascinated with puppy culture and wish it was something that I knew about when I first brought home puppies. 
Um, and I just, I love, I love dog trainers because I follow a couple of them. Well, I follow a lot of them on Instagram, though there are two in particular on Instagram, um, that are so, I, I just love them so much because they're so just matter of fact and easy and the way they deliver information makes so much sense. And I just get such a kick out of it. And it, and it's, it's interesting to me because I, I feel like dog trainers and people who work in rescue tend to have similar, probably veterinarians too, but it's mostly, I see it in rescue um, workers and dog trainers where you, you get to see kind of like the jerks of the world and how they interact with their dogs. And you're brought out to, you know, fix things, (laughs) dealing with people who are like, yeah, train my dog and they don't actually want to be involved. And you know that this isn't going to go well, but you, you know, and and I figure that, you know, it's got to be so hard to keep, um, to just be patient with people at times. Uh, when Rodrigo and Sydney were puppies and um, I brought them home and I was so excited to have puppies and I, I didn't know anything about litter mates or litter mate syndrome. I just thought that we adopted Rodrigo and then a couple of days later, I convinced Johan um, to get another puppy because it's like we were going to have two dogs. It's just that he wanted to start with one, make sure we got it and then get another. And I was just like, why don't we just get siblings? They've always known each other. They'll play. I just, I didn't know about litter mate syndrome until after we made the decision. And then by then I was not going to change my mind, but um, I reached out on social media (laughs) to get, to find out, you know, what should I know? And, and, you know, how can I avoid this? And this woman sent me, it was a trainer, the worst emails, just like she was furious with me for having litter mates and said, you're going to be one of those people. You're going to get bored with them. And then you're going to go take them and have them euthanized. And I'm so sick of people like you. And she was just like mess. And I'm sitting on the couch, reading these messages, thinking this woman was going to help me just bawling and thinking I'm this horrible person. And at the end of them, I was just sort of like, I'm done. I'm not going to listen to this anymore. And she was just sort of like, hey, one more thing. I went ahead and found you a dog trainer. Um, and just FYI, you know, you know, you're welcome because it's really hard to find qualified dog trainers in your area. And she wasn't wrong about that at the time. And so here's this woman. And the woman turned out to be the most amazing, like uh, polar <laughs> opposite, just the most amazing woman and just energy was so nice. And she came to the house and she trained our puppies and she was like, Oh, litter mates. Okay. We're going to train them this way. And she gave and told me things to watch out for. And if this happens, call me cause we need to do this. And, and we had a, I, I trained with her for a year oh, just wow. off and on with the puppies and she was so great. And so it's funny that, and I actually went back years later and thanked this trainer. And she was just sort of like, I don't believe I said those things. And I'm like, oh, you did. And not only did you say them, but I spoke to other people who have worked with you and they were like, yep, that's her. And and I was like, and it was horrible and you were mean, but you changed my life and because I have these amazing dogs. And and it's just like, so I it's too bad that it had to go that way. Right. But, you know, it's it I think that the experience made me appreciate the profession so much more because I don't know what she's seen in her career with right. people and their dogs. I always feel like when you get messages like that, like it's somebody's trauma speaking to mm-hmm. you because they've seen some shit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's like, I don't want to hear about it. I don't want to know about it. Thank you for the trainer. She was awesome. Right. And so she was just like, well, I'm glad it worked out for you. And I was like, it did. It worked out great. And yeah, and I have great dogs because of it and, you know, didn't have to deal with litter mate syndrome. And I was actually c- kind of cocky about it for quite some time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I w- when we had uh, our our old girls, uh, Lucy and, and Kalua, they were both female pit bulls, and I remember people saying like the most crazy things, like "You can't have two females in the same house." Yes, and, and it's like they were literally like the best of friends for ten years. Like they <laughs> look like they were just each other's best friend. They played. They. They tag team. I mean, I can't even tell you how many rabbits they killed over the years in our yard is they had like this hunting, you know, partnership down. Like yep. they were, you know, amazing. And and I understand like, and, you know, at the time I was still kind of so, such a new dog owner that I'm like, oh my God, you know, <laughs> and, and uh, you know, but now I guess I've just come to, to realize like, first of all, like 
Sometimes you have two female dogs in the house and it goes okay. Sometimes you have two in the house and it doesn't go okay. Yeah, and <laughs> same thing with litter mates. It's like some people have really great experiences with litter mates and some people have horrifying experiences yeah. with litter mates. I just, you know, I, I just love, I mean, it's, I don't want to be a dog trainer because, you know, I don't like people. So I just, I, I would not I be a I think there's dog. a lot of dog trainers that don't like people, actually. <laughs> It's like, I know going in that I would just not be good, <laughs> but I love the idea. So I, I like to read a lot of books. Um, I like to follow dog trainers. I love, I just love, um, these people who seem to, um, have this innate ability to communicate with animals in a way that I just have never seen. And it's just so amazing when like, I know a woman here locally she is a dog trainer. And when we brought Apollo home, I called her and asked her, you know, can I have an emergency session? It's like my stepson bought a dog. He can't take care of it. So Johan flew down to Arizona, got him and brought him back. And we're, we were going to take care of him, you know, in Johan's mind temporarily. In my mind, I was like, I have another dog. <laughs> <laughs> and I think my stepson was like, yay, <laughs> I made my stepmom happy because I was, and I love him till this day because of that, because he's a great dog. But um, yeah, she came out to, you know, because we were like low on time. We It wasn't one of those things where we can meet up somewhere and walk with the dogs or anything like that. And I know that it's not always a good idea to introduce dogs on your property because the, the home dogs can get pretty protective of their space. So she came out to guide us through the introductions. And it was just like a really, like an hour of taking each dog one at a time and then taking two dogs with Apollo and then, you know, and then all of a sudden the whole pack with Apollo. And then she spent time just watching how they interacted with each other and pointed out things that I needed to keep an eye on and, and helped me through that. And after that, I mean, Apollo and Rodrigo didn't get along for months. And, um, but for the most part, he blended into the family seamlessly because, you know, this wonderful person who was able to see things that I couldn't see. And I've, mm -hmm. I've had that experience with so many dog trainers. It's like, ah, I just love the profession. <laughs> I know. I'm, I always joke, like, some of my best friends are dog trainers. <laughs> <laughs> They're amazing, crazy, nutty people. <laughs> they truly are. <laughs> So I'll tell you just the other couple funny things that happened during the expo. Okay. So one of my favorite other moments of the expo is Rodney's talking. He's actually talking about uh, the different flea tick medications and the different studies, um, you know, showing the problems with the chemicals. Mm -hmm. And the fire alarm starts going off in the middle of his talk and we're all like, Oh my God. And the fire alarm had also gone off at like six 30 that morning. And, you know, and he had gone off for a long time to the point where I'm like, you know, I'm like, I'm in my pajama pants. Like, do I need to get out the door here? Like, I, you know, um, but it only went off for like, you know, a few rings while Rodney's talking. So he starts talking again. Now he's talking about the, the next study and like boom, the fire alarm starts going off again. And now he's like, Okay, is there like some sort of pharmaceutical rep here that doesn't want me to talk about this, you know? <laughs> and then he kept like starting and we're all like waiting, you know, is it going to happen? <laughs> so that was just like one of those funny, you know, things that, that happened. And then in the on the first morning when we're all standing in, in line to, to get checked in, um, Dr. Becker came down and of course everybody's kind of all a flutter like, oh, it's Dr. Becker. And she like grabs a stack of like name tag lanyards and she's like walking through like, is, you know, is this person here like Sawyer, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> And she's just walking through the line and everybody's like, oh, my God. Like, I think people were so, like, caught off guard. Like, nobody was, like, trying to grab her or anything, you know. But uh, but I just really have to hand it to, to Dr. Kozier, to all the people who were helping put it on, to, um, you know, Karen and, and Rodney's team with Blair Becker and, and Shana Allen. I mean, they just, they were rocking and rolling. We did these book signings and photos. And I mean, they were just checking you off. Like everybody was, you know, it was just a great event. Everybody was well organized and, and pleasant. I'm, and I'm so excited things. about that too, because <laughs> Kozier, I mean, she had to cancel it twice. I know. And she's like so good at it. And she, like, she had to cancel it. I think one time, 
the hotel canceled on her. And I think the hotel actually ended up closing because well, they renovated. I, I know uh, the place that it was at, they had actually rent renovated, um, which it was very nice looking. Everybody said it yeah. used to be very seventies looking, but it's yeah. very nice now. So exactly. I think that was one of the issues. Yeah. And it was just like, she's, I mean, she, because she was helping me when I was trying to plan the Seattle Natural Pet Expo. Mm -hmm. And she was so amazing, like shared everything. And I was like going over things with her. And I was like, they said this. And she's like, no, 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 you don't want to do that. You want to do this. And, and even when it was over, and I realized, I don't think this is going to happen. Um, they weren't going to give me my money back. And, oh. um, and she was just sort of like, go read the contract. She's like, I guarantee you there's something in that contract. And you, and I did, I read the contract and I copied the sentence and said, really, you're not giving me my money back. And just, I was like, cause the contract says this. And I got the check like a few days later in the mail. Wow. And it's just sort of like, yeah, they are, um, it's, it's not easy, but you know, it was no. exciting and stuff, but it's not, there's so many things you need to think about that you know, were it not for her guidance and she, and she gives, I mean, she, like all of these people, they give so much freely. Yes. I yes. mean, honestly, Dr. Kozier could package up a, you know, plan your own expo package <laughs> and sell it for $199 and people would buy it because there, it's not one of those, I didn't think it would be easy, but I honestly thought it would be similar to maybe having a simple wedding where you go to a hotel and you buy a like, you know, in Vegas and you buy a wedding package. Right. And so all you have to do is show up with your family and friends in your dress, do the wedding, they take the pictures and then you go about your day. And I, I literally thought it would be a little more complicated than that. And I was so very wrong. <laughs> I was so very wrong. And I had to be very clear about so many things and talk to them and make sure um, about so many things. And also because you know, different states are, you know, of course, going to do things differently. And also different hotel chains are going to do things differently. Um, but she was just, uh, just free with her time. Cause I would just be like, okay, this is what they're saying. This is, I don't know about this. And she was like, oh yeah, no, you don't want to do that. Or yeah, you need to think about doing this. And I love that she was able to pull this off. And I love that it was so huge because she is just like so completely amazing and so passionate about what she does with her, mm -hmm. you know, with it, when it comes to, um, you know, breeding dogs, um, veterinary medicine, puppy culture, and, you know, all, <laughs> I mean, and she brings all of this stuff together and it's just like, so amazing. Uh, she's, yeah, she's a pretty amazing person. So I'm, I'm just like, so excited. Oh, so that was something that I, I thought was kind of just an interesting fact, uh, you know, I'm I'm a big rescue person. I know you're very active in, in the rescue community, but I also know when it comes to health issues that you know that attracts a lot of people who are trying to breed and do mm -hmm. all the you know breeding. And um, I'll tell you, you know, I was never totally like adopt, don't shop because yeah. I always have understood that there are people who are breeding for specific purposes, mm -hmm. and you know, I understand it like in certain you know purposes. Um, but just from the idea of like being able to make your own health decisions for your dog, I, I really understand it too. Like any dog that we get, you know, is coming out of a shelter and has just gotten a um, hundred vaccines and, yeah. you know, dewormed and hit up with everything that there is, you know, when we already know that they're probably not at optimal health if they're, you know, been in the shelter anyway, and God yeah. only knows what they've been eating. And, um, and in my dog Nino's case, it was um, a car tire that uh, we actually had to have surgically removed from his stomach that he had been eating pieces of oh a God. car tire of a you know, steel belt and radial oh, car yeah. tire um, when we adopted him. You know, so it's like you never know kind of what you're what you're getting yourself into. And and so Dr. Becker was talking about like how her heart is always in rescue, but she's also very supportive of, you know, like there's people who have like five generation, seventh generation raw fed dogs. And and so she kind of did like a show of hands of like kind of who was here from rescue world versus who was here, you know, as breeding. And it was pretty much 50 50. And uh, I was actually kind of surprised by that. I actually, I actually thought it would have been more like 75 breeder, 25 um, rescue or, or something. I, so I was actually sort of surprised by that. And, uh, and I did stop. There was one girl um, 
and her boyfriend from Boston, and she had a big Pitbull Dean Russo artwork uh, hoodie on. And I just stopped her and I'm like, I just wanted to say I'm a Pitbull person too. <laughs> Because I, you know, everybody I talk to is like, oh, we have like Portuguese water dogs or like a poolie or, you know, and, and I'm like, where's my pit bull people? You know, so. I know. That's how I kind of feel about mutts is the sort of like, because everyone always asks me, you know, oh, you know, because I, I was at Home Depot. We we're doing house stuff. Um, I don't know if we, the last time we talked, if my wall was this color. But we no, did. it was red last yeah. time. Yeah. So yeah, we've been painting and doing all these updates to the house. and. um you know, we were at uh, Home Depot getting some stuff and the sweet little, probably like a golden doodle or something was, you know, was so sweet. And I was like, oh my gosh, can I, you know, pet your dog? And he was like, oh, but she'll jump. And I'm like, oh, don't worry. I got dogs. <laughs> I was like, and she, you know, she did these little wimpy jumps and I'm like, this isn't jumping. <laughs> <Your Liz> is <laughs> <nothing>. <laughs> my dog will break a hip. I'm worried. I worry that he will break someone's hip because he gets so excited and stuff. He tries to stay on his feet, but he just gets so excited. They start like dancing. <laughs> I know exactly. And it's just so funny, but it is, it's like, but he asked me, he's like, oh, well, how many dogs do you have? And I was like, four. He's like, oh, what breed? And I was like, mutts. And I always feel like, such a like it's a letdown I'm, I don't care that my dogs are mutts but I don't have any cool breed to share with them <laughs> sometimes I'll go well one is a Goberian but you know I don't like to promote <laughs> that because it's just right. sort of like it's still it's not a real breed it's just someone I, I feel like Apollo is a dog that you know, when Game of Thrones was popular mm -hmm. and everybody was getting huskies and, it, and then huskies started landing in the shelters. And so if someone was like, if we mix a husky with the golden, maybe it'll, you know, dial down the husky and they'll, people will like them more. And no, um, <laughs> Apollo is just a husky and a golden. It's, <laughs> it's just like, there is no dialing it down. He is a, hus you know, there is times when he is a husky and it's wonderful. There are times when he is a husky and it's awful. <laughs> and same thing with the golden. I mean, it's just like, it's, it wasn't a good blend, but he is a great dog. He is a, such a great dog, <laughs> but he's a mutt. Well, yeah, trust me. When I say I have pit bulls, you never know what kind of reaction you're going to get know. from people. <laughs> and that's what's so funny is I love pit bulls. I was raised with pit bulls. My father oh. raised them. And oh. funny story, they were always named Kojak and Lady. And so oh. I was a boy and a girl. And I always thought that they lived a really long life. And my father was like, no, I just kept naming the boys Kojak and the girls lady <laughs> so you guys could remember their names. Oh. And it's like, oh. <laughs> You're like, oh, you just ruined my childhood. <laughs> I see. But yeah, he's, he's the reason why I am the way I am. I'm, I'm an insane dog person. <laughs> Whereas my mom's like, isn't feeding raw going to make them bloodthirsty? Oh, boy. <laughs> I've seen that one before. <laughs> well, you know, it just always cracks me up when I hear people talk about like pedigree and papers and all these things. Because like <laughs> I literally found Penny in an alley in Northwest Baltimore. Oh, wow. <laughs> I was out TNRing cats with a friend of mine who she was uh, volunteering with this organization. So we're out trapping cats in this alley. And like, here comes this like skinny, saggy mama, uh, hardly any fur on her, you know, all like flea bitten up dog. And yeah, that's my penny. <laughs> oh, that's sweet. I love that because I always love that, you know, when dogs end up, you know, they, where, from wherever they come from, but then you see the pictures of them curling up on the sofa yeah, or, you know, sleeping on a pillow. And it's just like, oh, see, this is what your life should be like. Exactly. And she, she's so funny because since day one of her being here, she's like, I sleep on the bed. So <laughs> she knew what she wanted. <laughs> I just love that. That is, she's like, this is my, this is my world. This is exactly where I need to be. I love that. That makes me happy. Well, I'm glad you had a great time. Yeah, so it was it was such Aww. a good time. I'm so glad I went. Uh, you know, it sounded like somebody was won tickets to to next year's conference. So I have like a year to recover. <laughs> that was a lot of driving. <laughs> I know. I I will definitely be there next year. And um, but it's like, yeah, I'm gl I'm glad that I stayed home with my dog. He was fine. Nothing happened to him. <laughs> he would have survived if I left. I don't know if I would have. But um, but yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to just after seeing everyone have having such a great time. I, it was just like, what was I worried about again? <laughs> well, one of the funny things, uh, you know, uh, 
I was uh, had commented to um, Charlie and Larry of Paul Dega because they were posting that they were going to be there. And I was like, oh, I hope I get to meet you guys. And they were literally the first people I saw, like the first day I get there, I like walk in and I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> and so I'm like, I just have to say, <laughs> like, I was just saying, I hope I get to meet you. And literally like an hour later, I'm like, they are so nice. They oh are my like gosh, the yes. nicest people. I met them at the, um, the Dogs Naturally Summit. Mm hmm. And um, they are, I was just like so impressed with them and just, I'm, I'm I'm just very impressed with them. And 13 hours, they flew 13 hours to get there. <laughs> I mean, so, I mean you just got to admire them. that kind of dedication. Yeah. Cause there's no way. I mean, I, I remember there was a time when they were trying to plan a, um, a conference in Australia and um, we were all invited to speak at it. I felt so lucky just to be included in, you know, with Becker and Habib and other people. I was like, you want me? <laughs> because it's like, okay, yay. And um, I told Johan and I was like, will you come? And he was like, hell yeah, I'll come. And that was the only way that I was going to take a super long flight. And I was like researching, like, what can I go to the doctor and get like a sedative <laughs> so I can just sleep through most <laughs> of the flight? <laughs> And get and I was really looking forward to it, but the um the whole event fell apart and it didn't happen. So yeah, lots of respect for anyone who could handle a thirty. I always wonder what do you do. I mean, I figure you read <laughs> and watch TV and stuff, but it's like so long. Yeah, but it was very good. so. It was a lot of a lot of awesome people I got to meet and and talk to, and uh, you know probably talk that you're off. But <laughs> oh, it's, it's they do the same thing. It was nice. It was funny because so many people were tagging me to say we're at dinner, we are missing you, and, and I was just like, oh, thank you. <laughs> what are you eating? <laughs> <laughs> what did you order? <laughs> but yeah, I think when the last time I was there, um, Billy and I went to a really cool steak restaurant. Um, I don't think it was across the street, but for all I know, it might have been. Um, the biggest thing that I remember was that Billy was driving a rental car and there were plastic bottles and garbage <laughs> on the floor. And I was just like, wow, do people know this about you? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Oh, funny Billy story. So apparently he came to the conference only wearing flip-flops <laughs> and had not brought any other shoes with him. And, you know, it was like, you know, it was like 65 and sunny the first day, but it was like 50 and rainy kind of, you know, the rest of the time. So apparently he had to go to Walmart and buy shoes. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Very nice. So oh, that's modeling them. Well, I'll have to call my friend Judy. She's she owns um canine system saver and tell her, okay, we definitely are going next year. <laughs> well, yeah, that was another great part. I was just getting to talk to all the vendors and oh my gosh, I have this amazing Oh yeah, bag the bag. Yes. yes. What did you get in the bag? Oh, my gosh. Oh my gosh. So <laughs> I have I have kind of like been holding on to this so that I could talk to you about it. And so my dog Nino has like been going nuts like what is in that bag? <laughs> so um we got like a, a raw vibrance. Nice. Um free, I, you know. I do love um, the base mixes. Uh and then um Volhart Nutrition, they were giving away just like free like full size samples you know or full size products like vitamin b complex nice um i got digestive enzymes uh i got krill oil from them nice uh, that's expensive i know and then oh I, I did open the dr becker bites uh cuz that's like i've been sharing penny and you know have had some of those and so they are obsessed. <laughs> yeah. Well, my cat, the first time I brought home Dr. Becker's Bites, um, it was from Super Zoo. And it was sort of towards the end of Super Zoo. So I just went and sort of dumped a bunch of the samples <laughs> into my bag. And I had a, the bag hanging on the door, on the top of the door. My cat somehow got in a way where he can <laughs> jump up onto the bag and pull it off of the door, went into it oh and gosh. just started eating. Went the, to town. <laughs> yeah. It was like, wow, crazy. So this was in the gift bag. It is nice. the real mushrooms, reiki, reishi mushrooms, 90 capsules. This is a valuable bag. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we got some uh, chicken, a hula lula chicken. Nice. Uh, let's see. We got oh, Honest Kitchen sample. Very nice. Uh, oh, we also, I, I did give 
Tim, so uh, the real mushrooms, they have the the chocolate bars with mushroom uh, in them. So it was like super dark chocolate, which is totally Tim's thing. So he got to eat that. And they actually had to make an announcement, like, just so you know, everybody, like the chocolate that's in the bags, that's for people, not for <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh, we got some um, organic hemp dog shampoo. Very nice. I will definitely be using that. Uh, we got, oh, we got a um, cocoa therapy sample. Yes. Are those the cocoa flakes? Yes. Oh, I turned my friend onto those and she is obsessed oh, with coconut them. chips and um, a thing of uh, coconut oil. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, that's really cute that they did that. And then I don't know if you saw online, but there was a whole snafu with Dr. Judy Morgan's team and getting there. Um, apparently Gwen made it, um, her luggage did it, the rest of their team didn't make it, and none of their products made it. <laughs> so, oh, no! <laughs> but they did send um, some gift bag items <laughs> that did make it ahead of time. <laughs> so we got, like, uh, you know, things like that. Oh, nice. Um, and then uh, we got, like, a green juju sample in here, um, some treat samples also. Oh, Nice. <laughs> My I feel cat like this isn't even everything because that's another thing my cat is obsessed with green juju treats. I have to oh. go to the um yeah, he loves he likes the duck treats, but he loves the beef treats. And then I got another whole folder here. And um, this is just like all of the like pamphlets and there's oh, like yeah. coupons and, and everything in it too. So and like I have all these business cards and uh, very nice. I have that's all the thing. <laughs> oh, like I, it's going to take me that. like a week or two just to like unpack this all. <laughs> oh my God. Now, now you just made me want to, I'm like excited for Super Zoo again, because that's basically <laughs> whenever I go to Super Zoo, I, you know how you have luggage where when you put it away in the house, you put a suitcase inside of a suitcase. Right. So that's how I pack for Super Zoo is I pack <laughs> my clothes in a suitcase and I put it inside of a suitcase. And, and I'm sure the people there are like, what, what you doing here? <laughs> it's just like, I got to go on a trip. And, um. And then, you know, when I come home, I just get all the stuff from Super Zoo and pack it into the suitcase. And then you have two bags on the yeah, way home. Yeah, and then two bags on the way home. Well, I actually, one of uh, my friends from Baltimore, who she flew to the event and she had kind of like a big tote bag and then she had her luggage bag. And then she realized she bought so much stuff <laughs> that yes. she couldn't fit it all. And a lot of it was, you know, you know, things like this. And mm -hmm. she bought like some CBD and all that. So I ended up like driving, driving her bag back home so she didn't <laughs> have to take it through the airport. That's so nice. I, the one time I th was this when I went to the last Healthy Dog Expo, I think it was when I went to the Healthy Dog Expo because I got a ton of stuff. And when I was on my way home, they opened everything because they were like, mm -hmm. "Well, what is it?" And they and and it was and stuff was sealed. And I was like, "Well, if you have to open," I was like, "But just don't spill it." or anything. I was like, because the stuff is valuable and I yeah. need it for my dogs. And so I ended up having a talk with TSA about like the benefits of every single thing that was in there. And so I'm just sitting there. I was like, oh, well, I give this to my dogs for this and da, 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 and just explaining things. And they were just like, just going through. You should have live streamed it. I know, holding it up. <laughs> well, what about this? And it's just sort of like, and I'm just sitting there. People are walking by like, what is that lady doing? Like, <laughs> like I it was like this drug smuggler or something, but it was actually kind of fun just to go through. And they were like, wow. So it's like, so you went to a conference for dog people? And I was like, yeah. And it's like, is this common? And I was like, like, you wouldn't believe. And I was explaining like, you know, and how, where I fly to. And, he, and they were just like, really? And I was like, yeah. It's like, it's, I was, and I was like, the pet industry is a $70 billion industry. industry yeah. Of course. And, and <laughs> so what's this? <laughs> I think, yeah, it was, it was um, because uh, the, da, 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 da. I've heard for life me, I can't remember her name right now, but um, she owns uh, Dr. Harvey's. She gave me a full bag of mm. like either the Paradigm or the Raw Vibrance. And um, that was like the first time I tried it with my dogs. And I was just like, I want you to try this. And I was just like, all right. And so they were like, what's this? And I was like, do not open that. And it's like, <laughs> it has the ingredients on it, but that is super vast. Like that costs like $85. So don't open it. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I had tons, I have tons of bottles with pills. I mean, who knows what people thought I was doing? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I will say, uh, it was like about a five hour drive from Baltimore and I do still think I would drive next time. Yeah. I don't like, I think it's just, uh, Wendy. I'm sorry, Wendy. That's her name. Her name is Wendy. <laughs> I, you know, I liked, I like not having people go through my stuff. <laughs>
<laughs> and it wasn't like that bad of a drive. So. Yeah. And I could if, listen to podcasts the whole way. <laughs> yeah. If I, if I could do um, five hours, I would do it in a heartbeat. I mean, I actually talked to a local friend for like two minutes about driving cross country because oh. <clears throat> I was like, I don't know how long it would take. And she was like, it'll take 24 hours. And I was kind of like, I do it, but I don't want to do any of the driving. I just oh. want to sit in the, I, I don't like driving long distance and I don't, I don't like driving at all. I'll probably drive for like an hour, but I don't want to drive for five hours or something. That's yeah. I feel like that was kind of my max. I, yeah. I don't think I could go much, much farther. Yeah. And I mean, it is right next to the airport, so it's con- mm-hmm. convenient, but I, I was like, I think I'd still drive. I like, you know, I like being able to go where, like I can go to Panera yeah. for lunch or something. Or- <laughs> it is. It's really nice. I can leave whenever I wanted to leave. <laughs> exactly. That's my thing is I just need to be able to hide and go someplace to recharge. <laughs> and so that's why I kind of like the idea of driving. But I just, I know in reality, I would never drive cross country. I just don't have it in me. But I can do five hours. I used to do that in college when I would drive home. Oh. Yeah. So, well, and of course, you know, that was like 30 years ago. <laughs> but um, I, I think I could still do it. <laughs> <laughs> I had like, you know, three or four cold cases from the 90s to solve on the way. (laughs) Nice. (laughs) But yeah. Oh, well, that was good. Thank you for sharing everything. That was so much. I mean, gosh, so much information. And oh, broccoli sprouts. That was one of my other takeaways. Yes. I had broccoli sprout from Rodney. Yes, from Rodney and from from Dr. Becker. And I was like texting my husband, like, we need to do this broccoli sprouts thing. Like, you need to get on it right so now. So where did they, did they suggest how to, because I just been sprinkling them on my dog's food. Oh, I think you're actually supposed to kind of like, uh, like grind, like grind them up or uh, to get like the full benefits. Okay. Them. Then that's good. To yeah. Know. I have, a, I, they carry them at like Safeway here and basically any, I want to call, you know, I call it fancy store and it's not really a fancy store, but a store that has like a fancy section Mm -hmm. will might have, because I, and you know, Safeway has dandelion greens, no other store does. And they have broccoli sprouts. I I just was like, I bet you Safeway will have. And I walked in and they were right there, organic broccoli sprouts. And so I got a couple of them. Do you guys have Wigman's out there? I think Mm -hmm. they might just be an East Coast thing. No. That's like all the things. So yeah, so that, that was, um, yeah, I was like texting Tim, like, because he, uh, like, he's in charge of like the herb garden and things like that, and I have like a black thumb. So, uh, I'm like, we need to, and he, and I keep seeing broccoli sprouts everywhere, and he's like, what broccoli sprout thing? And I'm like, oh, because uh, he doesn't do uh, social media. Yeah. And so he like, I'm like, oh, you don't see this like ten times a day. <laughs> <laughs> and then one of the other just like main takeaways that I had was um about being your dog's advocate. Yes. And you know, that's just I feel like every speaker touched on that in in some way and I was like, yes, yes, yes because I I say that and even with ourselves in our own health and and you know, stuff that I I've had to learn like that's definitely one of our like one of my like biggest lessons that I've I've had to learn is about advocating and sometimes it's uncomfortable yeah. and sometimes you're going to feel like the crazy person and sometimes your vet's going to call you a witch doctor when yes. it to me. <laughs> and um, <laughs> you know and, and you just have to trust that you're doing you know the right thing for your for your dog and um so I just those were those were my big takeaways <laughs> that's awesome that sounds it sounds like it was a fantastic event yeah it'll probably take me two weeks for my low back to recover from all the driving but (laughs) awesome did your dogs were your dogs excited to see you when you came home oh my god yeah (laughs) like penny would not let me out of her sight for like two days (laughs) (laughs) that's like the best part i used to when i came home from from any trip as I was driving onto the property, I would just film the dog's Aww. reaction. And I, it wasn't even really to share it on social media. It was just sort of like I would just sit there and be like, they love me. Oh, Look at this. Me. They yeah. love me. They were both sitting because I had, um, I had let Tim know when I was about like a half an hour or so away. And uh, like right when I had kind of come back into Maryland and I was like, you know, okay, I'm in Maryland. And so he uh, had sent me like a picture of them like kind of waiting, like looking at the, out the front door. And so they were both just like sitting at the front door, you know, waiting for me. <laughs> Oh, there they are. 
And Penny, <laughs> when she gets very excited, um, she grabs something. It's usually a shoe. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so she goes like running around looking for a shoe, you know. <laughs> Apollo does that. He goes and looks. And so we have a, he have, well, his toy box is over there now, but he has a toy box. And because, um, and sometimes I'll put, toys stuffed toys in different parts of the house so that he doesn't go and grab a shoe <laughs> and so he has the option because sometimes coming to the toy box is just too far you gotta get something close you gotta get to the right yeah yep. and then nino like he um is he gets like too excited and he's just got to go chew his ball and he's like she's home i gotta go chew my ball on the sofa for 10 minutes because i'm way too like excited about this you know i love that so much dogs are so awesome they are I definitely felt like I was missed and uh and stuff so but yeah it was a, it was a great way to spend a weekend and like so very like invigorating and um inspiring and and but also good to be home. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you went. I'm glad you went. That was that sounds like such an amazing trip. I'm just like I'll have to um send a message to um, Kozier because it's just like I know that she works so hard on yeah. those things and she'll probably take like, like a break for a month and then she'll be back at back it, at it. Yeah. planning the next year I'm sure <laughs> I bet it's I'm sure and I'm sure you have to start those far ahead of time too with, mm -hmm. with these things just in the things that I've been involved in like that over the years you know in professional life <laughs> yeah it's scheduling the place and yeah because people plan these stuff out and and it's just like wow it just sounds like it just really, I mean, I, every, there's always going to be hiccups, but it still sounds that it went off really well. And yeah. so I'm really, I'm really happy. And that, honestly, like any of the hiccups that there were, were just either sort of comic relief, like the mm -hmm. fire alarm going yeah. off or, you know, sometimes there was like a little bit of a delay, uh, but it's like, everybody's like just talking to each other. And so it almost just was like a good thing to like yeah. give people more time to like chat and get to know each other and, exactly. and bond and, and stuff. So I didn't look at any of that as like a negative at all. You mm -hmm. know, I, I actually thought like, Oh, I, I got to talk to this woman. I was like a middle school teacher from a teacher from <laughs> Cape Cod. And, you know, I know about her dogs. And, you know. Oh yeah. Um, did they, did you get a sense of like where people were from? It sounded like all over the place. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Um, you know, I, I talked to a lot of people that were um, probably like more East Coast based, mm -hmm. but, you know, of course, Charlie and Larry were there. Yeah. I know uh, Noor came from Paris. I know that there were people from South America there, of course, Canada. I mean, it was really. Oh, that is so worldwide. amazing. Um, what an amazing event. That's so I know so I talked exciting. to somebody from Texas, uh, Maine. Um, I, I, there was one woman who I had to chuckle. She was from uh, Queens, but she flew there. <laughs> <laughs> she hates driving. <laughs> How far is Queens from Albany? I mean, it's in New York. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess it's maybe like two or three hours. But well, it's, I mean, I, I actually have flown from, you know, Seattle to Portland, but <laughs> I've only done it like once. And it's, it literally is by the time you get up to altitude, you're coming back down again. It's, right, just, right. it's just this. And it's just like, and then you're there. It's a really quick trip. <laughs> and uh, I know I talked to somebody from Rochester. Um, New Jersey, Virginia. Nice. Um, yeah. Or uh, I know I saw like Florida mm -hmm. uh, license plates in the parking lot, which um, I was like, that's a ride. That's a, yeah, <laughs> that they had dog stuff all over their car. So I knew yeah. they were there for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So those weren't rental cars. Those right. were actual cars. <laughs> right. <laughs> wow. That is so exciting. Oh, I'm glad that you went. That's so exciting. So I, I have all these notes. I'm probably... I had that was the other thing that just made me laugh when I saw Charlie and Larry and they're like typing away on their laptop and I'm like, oh, I'm old because I'm like sitting here with like a notepad and reading no. things. <laughs> I'm actually I'm so analog. <laughs> I'm really good at typing. I I when I went to the Dogs Naturally um, Summit, I live blogged every oh. session that I went to. But you know, Dana and their team gave me free tickets to go, and so I just had to pay for the um, hotel and the flight. And so, you know, I was like, well, if they're going to give me free tickets and I'm just going to do this. And it was funny because I live blogged the cocoa therapy session and they were so shocked the late, that's how we sort of, that's how we became friends. Cause they were just sort of like, we read what you posted. You got all of our stuff almost word for word. Cause I was just like <laughs> taking pictures and, <laughs> and I got everything in there. They're like, how did you do that? And it's like, I'm an accountant. 
<laughs> well, yeah, I have like in my notes, it'll be like, see slide because I would like take a photo mm-hmm. of the slide, you know, so I'm going to have to try to turn this into something in my computer. Or something. That'll be so much cool. Okay. Awesome. I'm excited. That is so yes. much fun. That is so much All right. fun. All right. Well, that is it for today. Yeah. I'm glad that you went. I'm glad. Thank you for sharing that with me. It was just like so amazing. I'm like, I'm grinning from ear to ear, just like, and I didn't even go. I'm just like, wow, that sounded awesome. (laughs) And there's a, there's a dog right here. I think he's telling me that he wants to eat. So we will sign off for the week. Until um, next time. Yeah. We'll chat again next time.